Hey and welcome back once again to another video. Today is another review day and I'm going to check out a plugin from Brainworks. Um, it's a software emulation of a very famous console and what it's all about and how it sounds we're going to check out now. All right, so before we jump right in, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the plugin itself. Um, as I said in the intro, it's emulation of a very famous console, and the console was actually made by Focusrite. Um, not actually many of those consoles were made, as far as I know. There's also a very nice um, um, documentary on YouTube by Focusrite where they travel around the world and see the studios where the console is actually placed in. So. Check it out if you're interested in the, the real hardware. Um, but today, and I'm going to show you now, the plugin of the Focusrite um, console, the BX console Focusrite SC. And I think um, just when we look at it, they did a really nice job on the, um, the interface itself and how it looks. Um, basically, the same colors as the original one, um, the blue, um, white, and yellowish color. And let's go through the features. Um, I have a, a acoustic song here with bass, guitar, and lead vocals. Um, lead vocals helped me out, a very good friend. Um, she's called Stephanie Trexler. Um, we did this song together. It's a rendition, a acoustic rendition of the song Dream a Little Dream of Me. I'm gonna play that in a minute, but let's um, go through the features. And let's start off in the right side here, which is the input section. Um, first of all, we got very nice meters um, for the um, view, the output, and you can also set it to input view and DBU. Um, when you click on the focus right itself, you can also adjust the um, meters in terms of reference where I have it. I set it to negative 18 dBFS. Um, which is my standard level here, um, because negative 18 dBFS equals zero VU, and I have also the console set, for example, of, um, like that. Um, and then we also got um, two little meters for the compressor and the gate. Um, we get a fader here, which is the output fader. Um, and there is also buttons, um, which is kind of like a randomizer button. When you click it, you can see it changes here the um, TMT, which is essentially emulation of the various channels of the analog console. So, for example, you can click manually through it, um, starts, or you can just type it in, um, starts with one and um, it goes up, I think, to 72 or something like that. Let's try 73. I think it was 72. Yep, 72 is the channel count here, which they emulated, um, which is actually actually quite a lot. And then with this button, you can also change um, on all instances where you have inserted the plugin, the um, channel settings. So you can randomize that, for example. But let's leave it just on one. Um, and then we have the input gain. We have a V gain, which is here um, basically analog, a um, little bit of his, which every channel of analog console had. Um, so you can cut that or you can increase it, whatever you like. I'm personally a fan of um, decreasing it um, because I have an analog console and I don't want to add another um, stage of hiss, um, so analog noise. And then this small screw button here is the um, harmonic distortion. You can turn it off or you can drive it quite a bit um, and you get really nice saturation. Um, there's also a face button and a mute button. Then this section here is the EQ section. Start off here um, with a um, high cut, 20,000 hertz to 3,900 cycles, and a low cut, um, 20 hertz to 330 cycles. And you can also, for example, divide it, and um, for the low cut, um, you can um, multiply it times three. And then we got um, four different bands here. We got a high mid frequency band um, where you can change the bell curve, and um, that goes from 600 up to 6,000 cycles. And um, with a very nice big um, gain knob, and you can also cut it here. 
Then same as for the low mid frequencies, 40 to 400. And again, you can um, multiply it by three. And then we got high frequency shelf EQ, um, where you can set it for 3,300 cycles and 18,000 cycles, um, which is actually quite high. Um, for example, if you want to add really, really um, a top end to an instrument or to a vocal, just to get a little bit more air in there, that's really great to use, for example, the 15,000 um, hertz range. And then a low frequency band um, goes from 33 up to 330. Um, and there is also a very nice feature that you can cut all bands at once or you can do it um, just with single bands. Um, and you can also set the EQ to post or pre. Um, next sections here are the dynamics. Um, let's start off with the comp. Um, pretty much a very standard comp here. You get the ratios, um, limiting and 1.5 to 1. Um, threshold knob, you got a release. We've got attack, fast and slow. Um, slow is 90 and fast is 0.3 milliseconds. And um, there's also a makeup gain, of course, and also a mix knob. So you can blend it in, which is really nice. I don't know if the original console had that or if this is a feature of the plugin, but it's very nice to have. Um, and there is also a DSA um, where you can um, broadly cut out, um, especially in vocals, or sometimes also you can use it on cymbals or hi-hat or something like that, um, cut out certain frequencies that you don't like. Um, goes from 50 hertz up to, to uh, 20,000 hertz. Um, and there is also a listen button where you can just listen to the frequency that you want to reduce. So very nice to have. Going to show you that on the vocals then. And lastly, there is also a small section here with a low pass and a high pass filter. Um, and basically can also decide the, um, the frequency itself. Um, we can make a low cut, for example, to when you press this button once um, to the gate and highlights there. You can set it to both, um, so compressor and gate. Um, you can set it um, just for listening and off. Standardwise, it's on the compressor and you can basically um, say the compressor that it shouldn't compress to um, a certain frequency or if you don't want the compressor to um, react to lower frequencies, you can do that with that filter. It's nice to have and same applies here for a high pass filter um, and you can also use it um, on the gate. Um, and speaking of the gate, you got a um, very nice feature-wise gate because you got a fast attack um, and when you depress this is a slow attack. Um, you get a threshold for that, you get also the range um, um, dB-wise where you want to set the gate. You can also use it in expander. Um, you can have an external key input here or a key listen. Um, you get a hold knob, so how long the gate is actually holding back and you get a release here. Um, so that's overall the plug-in. There are also um, um, some, some presets coming with it. As you can see, bass, drum, guitar, synth, vocals, and so forth. Um, yeah, um, so I think it looks really nice. But now let's listen to the song and then I'm going to show you what I did here um, and um, how the song sounds without the plugin. I have on every instance of the um, instruments and also on the vocal. Um, the focus right. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes. So seem let's to bring up the mixer here. Let's highlight you. everything. Now, as you can see, I have on every instance the, the software. Tree. And let's cut it. Dream a little dream of me. So that's without the focus right emulation. Say nighty night and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. While I'm alone and blue as can be. Dream a little dream. 
all right? So first of all, let's start off with the base here. And I have going on quite a bit of compression, as you can see, up to 8 dB of compression here with a ratio of 3 to 1. And um, release is not that slow, a little bit of a faster attack out it. And with. Um, EQ wise, I did a low cut here of 40, um, especially in this space, it didn't need um, anything below 40 hertz um, because um, I like to cut things in like that acoustic song. Um, I don't need the, the low end rumble of, of bass signals in there. Um, and especially also on, I did it on the guitars, um, for example. Um, I added, however, a little bit of 1.5 thousand hertz, um, 3.5 dB, and I also reduced um, just a little bit of 100, 110 here. And that's basically it. Added overall a little bit of distortion here. And I just used the randomizer here for the um, channel emulation. So without the plugin. All right, let's go to the guitar and I have two here, which were recorded with a Lewitt 040 pencil microphone. A very small one actually, but very nice sounding. And an AKG C414. Um, but I did on the AKG C414 um, a little bit of a um, ADD, which is artificial double tracking. Um, I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but let's focus now on the just on the first microphone here. Again, compression, 3 to 1, not that much actually, 4 dB. Made here a low cut of 80. Um, get a little bit of muddiness out there, which is on acoustic guitars of times from 200 to 150, so reduce that. And I also reduced 160 here with the low shelf, just to get um, the bass um, a little bit more reduced. However, I added a little bit of a sparkle here, 6600 hertz. And added a little bit of input drive. So that's without it. And with quite a bit of a difference, right? And on the other track here, um, let's cut the ADD. Um, I put that microphone a little bit farther away um, and I had that because I wanted to get a little bit more of the brightness of the guitar and I also angled it towards the um, bridge actually a little bit more. So it sounds actually quite brighter. What I did here is same compression as on the other one. Um, reduced here 110 with a low cut. Um, again, took out some of the 200 area and also of the 160 and added here 4.7 kilohertz. Quite a bit actually, 6.9 without it. And with. And again, um, added here just with the randomizer um, another channel here. Um, this plugin here is artificial double tracking, which I actually quite like. Um, it's a free plugin from Vacuum Sound, so check it out if you're interested in that. Um, just quickly, um, artificial double tracking was um, introduced, I think, back in the 60s. Um, the Beatles and also especially John Lennon used it quite a lot on his vocal, um, which is essentially you have one performance um, and you have two tape machines, um, one is slightly off, um, which is kind of like a phasey and um, chorusy type sound. It goes back and forth and it appears or we perceive that as there were two 
um, for example, vocal takes or two um, instrument takes. However, there's just one, but they use two tape machines for that. So this is artificial actually double tracking. And um, I have here my, basically my preset here um, where I have played around just with the settings here with the vowel and the flutter and the frequencies and so forth. And you get this very nice double tracked left and right guitar sound. And um, I really like that on, on, on um, signals that are more top end heavy um, because you can really separate that from the middle one. Let's bring also the other one in. Let's cut it out. And it just opens it up ever so slightly. All right, so those were the guitars. There's also a solo here. Let's check that out. Again, same setup here with the Lewitt and the AKG. The first one, compression, five to one, a little bit more compression. And I actually reduced here with a high cut of 10,000 Hertz and I made a low cut of 120. So just narrow it down um, to make it sit better in the mix. Don't need to, to really top end here in the solo. Um, and I also um, reduced 2.5 kilohertz. As you can see, 1.9 dB, make it a little bit darker sounding. And again, with the high shelf also 10, took away 10,000 Hertz. So without it. Quite bright sounding. Together with the other one. Just bent it fully to the right, for example, the um, second microphone, just to bring it out of the way of the middle guitar here, so together with the other guitar. All right. So the vocals were tracked by Stephanie in her own studio. Um, so it was done remotely and she did a really great job with that. So let's listen to the vocals without the um, focus right plug in. Say nighty night and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. Let's bring it in. While I'm alone and blue as can be. Dream so I just cleared it a little bit up, make it better sit with the bass and the um, acoustic guitars, even though it was tracked very, um, really good. Um, so first of all, compression here, five to one, um, and with a very fast release, Say and a, kind of like a fast attack, 10 ms, you're not that fast. Me. It's a good starting point, 10 ms, just always in vocals. Hold me tight and tell me so as you can see, up me. to 8 dB of compression. While I'm alone and blue as and I also have the DSO now going on here. So for example, you can just listen to the frequency. I have reduced here 10,000 Hertz. There was a slight um, um, ringing there that I didn't like, so I took it out with the DSO. For example, when you swipe through it, you can just listen to the, um, the frequencies that you want to reduce. But let's leave it to 10,000 Hertz where I had it. Again, the beginning. Say nighty night and kiss me. And then I also made a low cut of 100 and I um, boosted a little bit the mid frequency 2.5 kilohertz, um, just slightly. Um, and I made a very, very high um, top end boost, 15,000, where I said in the beginning, this is a very nice frequency band to have to give um, the whole vocals a little bit more ear, but ever so slightly. 
and 270 here hertz. I reduced that. Um, there is quite a lot of voices muddiness in there. So 200, 250, 270. Um, I most of the time cut that a little bit. And that's basically all I did here. Say nighty night and kiss me. Without it. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. Let's bring the other instruments While in. I'm alone and blue as can be. Dream a little All right. dream. Um, and finally, just um, for the record, there is a little bit of reverb going on with the um, new Waves plugin, the Echosphere. Say just use the plate reverb here. Very long setting, four seconds, pre delay 30. And I have that on every single While instrument I sent to that reverb. As, as well as on the vocals, but um, not on the bass. So let's listen again to the song without the, all the instances of the Brainworks um, focus right emulation. So first start off without it. Say nighty night and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. While I'm alone and blue as can be. Dream a little dream. Of me, stars fading, but I linger on, dear. All right, still, and that's basically it. Um, what I can say about this plugin is, um, that I really because I, I'm so used to working with the console, I, I like that the plugin, um, basically, it's all also the same with, for example, a another emulation like the SSL or something like that, that you have everything in one plugin that you essentially need to create um, a, a, a typical mix. Um, you got a um, EQ section, so with low and high pass um, filters. Um, you got a gate and a compression, which you probably always use. Um, and there are also nice features, for example, like with the filter for the compression and the gate. Um, or the emulation of the different channels, for example, and the um, total harmonic distortion. So that you can add with this saturation, EQ, and compression. And th that's really nice to have in one, one plugin. And I think that it, Brainworks did a really great job with that. Um, so I really, really am going to use that um, plugin in the future in my mixes. I'm gonna load it into my mix template, even though I have the analog console, but this is very nice to have. Uh, when you're working in the box. And of course, if you watch the documentary that I said in the beginning of the Focusrite console um, with the typical ESA type sound, which is the input stage, so the microphone and the line input, um, it, it was actually quite a clean console. And also this plugin is actually on the more on the clean side. Um, in terms of sound, when you compare it, for example, to a Neve or a SSL sound. Um, but that was actually the whole um, the whole um, process of Rupert Neve, who designed actually the, the first ESA preamp. Um, and I also have a ESA preamp in my rack here, which is the, the ESA 2. And I really like to track with that vocals, acoustic guitar, and so forth. So acoustic songs, but also all, all other mixes, um, great to use that plugin. So once again, I hope I could give you a good overview of that. Um, check out um, the Brainworks website if you are interested in this plugin. Um, it's called the BX Console Focusrite SC. And there's also a trial version, I think. So just try it out and see if it's something for you. And as always, Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you can see my videos when I upload them. And so long. See you hopefully in a next video.